Welcome to Physics 371 Online. I'd like to work out an example problem of finding the electric field of a continuous charge distribution that's just a little bit different from the example in the textbook. The example in the textbook uses a linear charged rod and asks us to find the electric field on a, a line that bisects the rod. And here, let's take that same rod but bend it around into a semicircle so that we have a semicircular charged rod with radius r and, to keep it simple, a uniform charge per unit length of lambda. So using the coordinate system and this uh, uh, crude sketch that I've drawn here, we're going to break down the rod, as always, into little pieces. And that piece is going to have uh, a charge element dq. And if we use s to represent then the uh, uh, arc length, then ds would simply be uh, the length of that arc. We want to find the electric field at the center, in other words, at the origin. And so I'm going to sketch in a couple of dotted lines that show the subtended angle, the angle subtended by this uh, element of the rod. And we will define an angle, which uh, to be consistent with uh, cylindrical coordinates, we'll make that the angle phi, and then say that this little arc length, ds, subtends an angle d phi, a differential amount of angle d phi. And then the electric field uh, will, assuming the rod is positively charged, the electric field DE, the element of electric field, will point away from the rod like that. And one of the things that we can see right away uh, by the geometry of the situation is that the charge DQ will simply be the charge per unit length lambda times DS. And if the rod itself has a radius R, uh, the semicircular rod, then ds will simply be r d phi. Right? So the dq is now lambda r d phi. Before we can go further, uh, in order to find the uh, components, we can use a little bit of symmetry to simplify our task. And so uh, just as we wrote in class, we always know that the electric field vector will have an x component in general and a y component. There won't be any z component here. Oops, won't be any z component here because the uh, z-axis is perpendicular to the uh, plane of the sketch. But uh, one of the things that we can see by symmetry is that for every element of the rod that's on the positive side of the x-axis, there'll be a corresponding one, and I'll just sketch it in over here on the negative side of the x-axis at the same angle away from the y-axis, and the horizontal components of the electric field vector, in other words, the x components, will cancel. So what we can say here by symmetry is that the x component, which would actually be given by the integral of the dex, the x component of the de vector, that's going to be equal to zero by the symmetry of the charge distribution and the fact that we want to find the electric field at the origin. So because of that, all we really have to do now, we need to realize that E will just be E sub Y times Y hat, and therefore we need to find E sub Y, which is now the integral of the Y component of this electric field vector DE. And I can realize that that DEY can be written as the magnitude of DE itself times the cosine of this angle phi. All right, so I'm making progress here. DE, of course, using Coulomb's law and the definition of the electric field is simply DQ over 4 pi epsilon 0 times, in this case, the distance between the point where we want to find the field and the charge distribution squared. And that's nothing more than the radius squared for this semicircular arc. So now let's put all the pieces together in order to express this EY, the component of the electric field which we want to find. So we get the integral, adding up the contributions all along the length of the rod, 
of, well, dq, we now know what dq is, it's lambda r d phi. So in the numerator we have lambda r d phi, and then in the denominator we've got 4 pi epsilon 0 r squared, and then we have to put in this factor of cosine phi because we ultimately are calculating just the y component of the DE vector shown in the sketch. The limits, if we define phi as being measured in the sense that's shown by the arrow in the sketch, then the left hand edge will be at phi equals negative pi over 2, the right hand edge on the positive x-axis will be at positive pi over 2. So we add in the limits and we're ready to go. This simplifies, of course, because we see that the r in the numerator and the r squared in the denominator simplify. So we'll write this as lambda over 4 pi epsilon 0 r times this integral of simply cosine phi d phi from negative pi over 2 to positive pi over 2 up here. Integral of cosine is simply sine, right? So now e sub y, we have lambda over 4 pi epsilon naught r times the sine of the angle phi from negative pi over 2 to positive pi over 2. And this expression here, when we evaluate it, will give us 1 minus a negative 1 or 2. And so we get simply 2 lambda over 4 pi epsilon naught r or lambda over 2 pi epsilon naught r. And so just for completeness, if we want to find the field, we should write down the vector form, which is just lambda over 2 pi epsilon naught r in the y hat direction. And that makes sense, assuming again that the rod is positively charged, that the net electric field should simply point along the y direction. And so that's a fairly straightforward problem, making use of a relatively uh, simple coordinate system, the cylindrical or, or plain polar coordinates, and using an elementary symmetry argument in order to simplify the problem. If we hadn't used that symmetry argument, we could have set that integral up to find the x component of the electric field. And when we integrated along the length of the rod, we would have had a factor of the sine of phi, which would integrate out to give us cosine or negative cosine of phi. And plugging in the limits, we would have gotten the answer 0. And so we would have kicked ourselves because we would have done unnecessary work. The principles of symmetry are very useful in physics, not only uh, because they allow us to save work, but because they give us deeper insight into uh, ways that problems can be uh, solved without having to go through all the grubby mathematics. In this case, it would not have been necessary. I hope this helps a little bit as you work on your homework problems, and I'll see you in class.